Um, Mr. McSwaran, a matter that we've raised before, and that is um, the Pluto matter. Hey guys, it's Paul Pluto. Paul Pluto, the method actor who plays Archie Luxury. And today, guys, I just want to comment about the uh, the news that Jackie Trad stripped of Cross River Rail after CCC ruling Deputy Premier. This is from the Brisbane Times. Deputy Premier Jackie Trad has been stripped of her signature Cross River Rail project, and the Premier's Chief of Staff have has fallen on his sword in the fallout from separate corruption investigations. And uh, basically what happened is the situation involved Jackie Trad, um, who uh, bought a, an investment house, <clears throat> investment property, $695,000, $695,500 property near a proposed Cross River Rail Station at Woolen Gabba. Um, it was purchased by her family trust. Um, anyhow, lo and behold, this is the same Jackie Trad who rang Alan McSporran on a Sunday. No conflict there, sunshine. Um, the, uh, the Crime and Corruption Commission found there was no evidence. Surprise, surprise. There was no evidence that Mrs. Trad had acted corruptly, but after... The decision was handed down. Premier Anastasia Palachuk announced Ms. Trad would be stripped of responsibility for the major transport infrastructure project. Pooba, pooba, pooba. So let me get this right. The biggest poison chalice, this cross river disaster, which is going to be an absolute blowout. Fuck me dead. That's going to be an absolute blowout. They've taken it away from her. Ah, uh, <laughs> I can't believe this. That's the punishment. That's the biggest fucking poison chalice they have. Fuck me dead. Fuck me dead. You are joking. Absolutely joking, aren't you? That's it. She didn't fucking want it. Nobody wants it. Fuck me dead, Palachuk. Is that supposed to be... Is that supposed to be... The, uh, the punishment. <laughs> <coughs> Fuck me dead. Jesus Christ. I mean, I mean, I, I just can't believe this. Um, yeah, yeah, Alan. Uh, I mean, the, the thing that really sickens me as a victim, I'm a victim of the CCC, was the fact that they're so fucking sloppy in preparing any, any of the evidence. They... They say that I allegedly told someone that I was being taken to a star chamber. A star chamber. So that was my offense. Allegedly telling somebody I was going to a star chamber. That's allegedly my offense. They came down on me like a ton of fucking bricks. Um, unprofessional sons of bitches, the CCC. They, they they didn't even serve the person who was their key witness. They didn't even subpoena him to come to court properly. Well, they didn't subpoena him at all. You can't subpoena by email, fuckers. You can't subpoena by email, Alan. Alan, you can't subpoena by email. I mean, you're a QC. Come on, for fuck's sake. You should know this, Alan. Um, so they came after me with such ferocity and tenacity it was so bad. It was so bad in my case. The, the the head prosecutor had to take a sickie. Had to take a sickie. He had to be ill, violently ill. <laughs> but uh, in Trad's case, hey, no, no misconduct. Hey, that's perfectly good. It passes the sniff test. Does it pass the sniff test? Fuck me, dead. <laughs> I've got... I've got fucking, I've got, I've got, I've got fucking beverages in my fridge here that are fresher, fresher than that sniff test. Does it pass the pub test? That's the question, Alan, I wanted to ask you. Does it pass the pub test? Does it pass the pub test? Um... <laughs> Um, 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 I don't think it does. I don't think it does. And I got to tell you, as somebody who's been the victim of the CCC, I just want to tell you that uh, Alan McSporran, 
I am very, very disappointed in you as, as, um, I'm just so disappointed. And I'd also like to say to Ms. Trad there, Ms. Trad, I am very, very disappointed in your behavior. And, uh, <laughs> I gotta say to Palachuk, 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 I gotta say Anastasia, Palachuk. I'm very, very disappointed in you. I mean, she didn't fucking want the poison chalice in the first place. Nobody bloody wanted it. And uh, I, I can't believe this crock of shit. I can't believe it. But anyhow, that's how it is. So uh, I'm very, very disappointed in you people there. Very disappointed. I'm Paul Pluter. I'm the Pluter matter, fuckers. Well, the time uh, being just after nine o'clock, um, I'll uh, welcome everyone and we'll go through the normal introductions. I'm Tim Nichols, the Chair of the Committee and the Member for Clayfield. Joining me on the Committee today are Ms Joan Peace, the Deputy Chair and the Member for Lytton, Mr Michael Crandon, the Member for Coomera, Mr Shane King, the Member for Kowongba, Mrs Melissa McMahon, the Member for McAllister, Mrs Sharif Smullen, the Member for Jordan, and Dr Mark Robinson, the Member for Ujuru. The Committee is beginning its meeting today in public to deal with a number of matters. It will then commence its public meeting with the Crime and Corruption Commission. Can I uh, thank you all for being so uh, interested in the affairs of the Committee to be here well before your time is required. Um, I hope you find the meeting interesting and exciting up until that time. The Committee will close the public part of the meeting and continue the remainder of its meeting in private session. We're currently scheduled to finish the public meeting at approximately 9.45am, but that time may run over should the Committee determine. The proceedings today are lawful proceedings and subject to the standing rules and orders of the Legislative Assembly. And as such, I remind all visitors that any person admitted to this meeting may be excluded at my discretion as Chair or by order of the Committee in accordance with Standing Order 208. Those here today should note that the proceedings are being broadcast live on the Parliament's website and that you may be filmed or photographed by any media present. And I note that there are media in the room today. You may also be included in photos taken by Parliamentary Service staff for purposes including posting on Parliament's website or social media services. To clear the meeting open, are there any apologies? Um, Mr McSwaran, a matter that we've raised before and that is um, the Pluto matter, um, which seems to have fallen over according to reports there. Um, are you satisfied with the way that that matter has been handled? Oh, frankly, no. Um, only in this sense, procedurally. <coughs> you know, uh, you're aware of there being um, a mistake. It's easily done, we know, but it's, it's not a good look to issue a notice to appear that is returnable on a holiday. Um, that happened twice, I think. And then um, subsequently on a Sunday, I think. On a Sunday. Um, anyway, the matter came on, as you know, last week, and it was... Uh, Effectively, the prosecution offered no evidence. The, the, we've just got the transcript, we're reviewing it, but essentially the, the reason for it was that the uh, main witness, and bear in mind that the offence charge was revealing uh, the fact that uh, Mr Pluto had been summoned to a, a coercive hearing at our premises. That's a confidential process. Uh, people who are summoned are warned about that, it, that they shouldn't be talking about it. When they come in for the hearing, they're told directly that they can't discuss it with anyone except their lawyer um, for good reasons to preserve the integrity of the investigation. Um, the allegation is that he then went and discussed the fact that he'd been called in and had the notice and showed the notice to um, a person uh, who was then working at Queensland Rail. That person was the, had given a signed statement to the prosecution, was the basis for the prosecution and uh, as it turned out um, that person uh, did not remain cooperative ultimately uh, did not turn up on the court date and regrettably it transpired that uh, despite many attempts to contact him uh, by way of text messages, emails and so forth, phone calls that weren't answered, uh, he remained uncooperative. The prosecution um, applied to adjourn the matter to pursue him and get him to court and the magistrate inquired about whether he'd been properly summonsed 
which, as you know, means he's compelled, and if he doesn't turn up, he can be subject to a warrant to bring him before the court. Um, he'd been served by email, which was not permitted under the uh, Justices Act provision. So the magistrate, I think, uh, understandably in those circumstances, refused the adjournment. The prosecutor um, had no choice but to offer no evidence. And those, um, in those circumstances, the charge was dismissed. We're reviewing all those circumstances uh, from a whole lot of uh, different as uh, perspectives. Um, but that's the <coughs> facts, essentially, as we know them currently. It just strikes me that on the day of the hearing, the prosecution must have well been aware that their primary evidence was not going to attend. If you, you say that there have been emails, text messages, phone calls and all of those things, and yet on what now seems to be the third return date for a prosecution of this matter, um, they then offer no evidence, um, irrespective of the rights or wrongs of either the person who's the subject of the of the prosecution, um, it does seem to me to be a real uh, uh, failing, if I can put it that way, in terms of following the prosecution and understanding what's going on. Do your officers monitor the prosecution because this one was not undertaken by, not carried out by you, it was carried out by police, or was it carried out by DPP? No, it was by police. Um, it was a simple offence mm. um, under our Act. Um, and then, so it went in the ordinary course. Uh, after we charged the Mr Pluter, yep. the brief went to the uh, QPS. The prosecution police prosecution section, service, yep. And the police prosecutor was handling it. Um, I agree with everything you've said except one, one small point, that is that we, would, we knew, or must have known, that the witness was not going to turn up. I don't think we can put it quite that highly, although you have to have strongly suspected, given the background circumstance, that he was a no-show. But um, if you have no contact with him and, and um, uh, can't otherwise force him to come to court, you, you're sort of <coughs> stuck with that and it only comes to a head on the day that he's supposed to appear. So um, the, the issue I'm more, I'm more concerned about is the belief that he'd be served by email. Mm. Um, mm. That's a failing, it seems to mm. me, on the face of it. Yes. It has been just, just wrong and more. Um, so we need to do better, I agree with that. Do you, do you monitor the progress of those things or do you rely on the prosecution service to, to, to if you like, follow through those procedures? No, it's our responsibility. If we if we arrest and charge, we give a notice to appear, as I think this case was, yes. it's our responsibility to um, to ensure the witness attends yes. and to issue the relevant paperwork to compel them. Yes. That's that's ordinarily the job of the police officer who charges the individual. So yes. in that case, it's our responsibility. Yes. We, when we accept, it's our problem. Yeah. Okay. Our fault. Thank you.